Some of you might remember in a previous video, I repowered this tiller. Uh, this is an old tiller. It's a Springfield. I think it's like 21 or 22 inches wide. It can dig or it can till about a foot deep. And it is uh, from the 60s. So at 40, 50, 60, that would put this tiller at about 60 years old. And I'm, I, put, I put some new life into this old thing. Uh, this was, uh, my dad remembers using this as a kid. So just to put that into perspective. But I, I repowered it with a Harbor Freight motor. And in this video, what I'm going to try to do is... I want to turn this into a three-point tiller, like you see at the store or at Tractor Supply or on eBay or Mark, Facebook Marketplace, wherever they're sold, new or used. And the reason I want to do this is this tiller, the tines do not spin very fast. They are kind of slow. and. I want to make this tiller into a counter rotating tiller. So I want to make this go on one of the back of the garden tractors we have. Either my brother's Sears Suburban, he could put this right on, or my Sears Suburban, that I could put it on the back of the three point of the, on this. We actually have one, two, three, we have four tractors with three points, uh, two big farm tractors, and uh, two garden tractors with three points. So I want to make this turn this into a three-point mounted tiller. So instead of it being like a toe behind or something, it's a three-point mount one. What I'm doing here is just cutting up some bread frame. This was uh, the tiller was free. I just resurrected it up out of the barn. Uh, the motor cost me a hundred dollars. The belt cost me another I don't know eight or something. And I had some pins and stuff. So I'm probably in this maybe a hundred and hundred and thirty bucks something like that now granted the tiller it needs uh, this part here needs cleaned up and whatnot but I'll get to that later I was just focusing on just uh, getting the motor bolted up and also uh, making this into a three-point tiller but I'm just putting the bed frame on here and I'm trying to figure out where to drill the holes. Uh, this base here is cast iron and it's pretty thick. I think it's about a quarter of an inch thick, maybe a little more. Uh, this was when, when this tiller was made, this was when the everything that they produced was overbuilt, super simple, and built to last a lifetime and I'm trying to build this thing as strong as I can you know I'm just your backyard guy I am NOT a professional I don't ever claim to be this is just something I've wanted to do and the main reason that I wanted to do this is we have had a horrible a horribly wet summer the 2018 season was we broke the highest rainfall record that that we've ever had since they've been keeping records so I think I figured it out we were like half of what the rainfall in the I don't know the Amazon rainforest or Amazon jungle gets is we got half of that here in one year versus what they get in a year so just to put things into perspective for how wet it was but the, as a lot of you know, we have a lot of, well, not a lot. I mean, we have some uh, big equipment. Uh, we have three farm tractors, and my brother has a, it's an 89 F350 with an international IDI a 73 diesel motor in it. And this spring, was it? I think it was this spring or spring or in the fall 
Uh, my brother put a utility body on it, so a service body, and it's one of the ones that you can stand up in. And we put it on in front of the my brother's shop, and there's no gravel or anything there, and we made some horrendous ruts. It, We made ruts, well, from where the duels were, they were, I don't know, maybe four or five inches deep, and... Uh, we actually had to use a, we used the neighbor's uh, Case 580 Construction King backhoe to put this thing on. It was quite a, quite an interesting uh, couple days to get that utility body on. Uh, we were so thankful the neighbor let us use the, let us use his backhoe. And I wouldn't say it was everything that machine could do to pick up the back of it, but it was definitely... It was definitely working uh, pretty hard just to pick up the utility body. Uh, just to give you guys some idea of how much weight we were dealing with here. Uh, we think the, the body itself weighed around 2,500 pounds and then whatever the truck weighs. I forget that off the top of my head. So anyways, we made some big ruts with the... Uh, the truck itself, just getting it in there, and uh, we also made ruts with the, actually made some pretty deep there, the, the ruts that the backhoe made were approaching, oh, probably a foot, foot and a half deep in some spots. Uh, it was raining really bad, of course, since it was the wettest year on record when we were doing this, and we just really made a horrible mess of the yard, so I figured I would go over it with this thing once things have dried out. Uh, we've had a somewhat of a dry spring, I guess. Uh, the ground was still pretty saturated, and it's dried out now. And actually, by the time you guys have seen this, I've already done some tilling with it, and it actually works, actually works quite well. I was really surprised. Anyone that knows anything about tillers knows that a counter-rotating tiller digs in and bites a lot better than a just a regular rotating tiller, which is what this thing was. You would drive forward where the handles were, basically where I'm at right now, and you just push it forward and it would just dig itself into the ground and I did that a couple times and all it would actually do is uh, just rip up uh, the grass get it down to dirt again and that was pretty much it it would not do anything else I would have to go over it a second time and with this I, my with me turning this into a counter rotating tiller so this tiller is going to be pulled backwards through the ground so from the left side of the screen to the right. This will make this tiller want to dig in and bite into the ground uh, pretty severely. It depends on the ground. Um, the first pass, I was able to bury this whole tiller almost a foot deep into the ground, and it would till it. Uh, that was in some relatively soft soil. And in ground that hadn't been tilled or anything, it would pretty much just, uh, it'd get at least halfway, uh, roughly halfway on the first pass of me driving forward. And what's nice with this is I can just leave this thing down, let it till in the one spot from the time that I go from reverse to first, or first to reverse gear in the transmission of the tractor. And then I just back up and just leave this thing down and just let it dig some more. So really I'm tilling going forward and backward with this thing. I have a mount that came off of something else. And this is kind of what I thought I would use for the top of the three point. And this ended up not uh, working. You'll see. Here's what I've come up with to mount this Springfield tiller on the back of my Sears Suburban SS16 twin. So this is actually just bed frame here 
And these are three point pins that I bought at Tractor Supply along with a category zero top link. And I have the same thing over there. So I pretty much just extended this out and mounted a pin onto here. And you know, just like a regular three point on a farm tractor, it is pretty much the exact same thing, just smaller. So unfortunately, this bar here, and I hope you guys can see that, it is a little bit bent. So what I'm gonna do is remove the ball hitch and remove that pin because it interferes with the arms going up and down. And then I think we'll put this thing on. Hopefully the top link is gonna be long enough. I had these two pieces of uh, steel. A neighbor had dropped them off. He, he found them alongside the road or whatever and gave them to me and they have found their way onto the tiller here so funny enough this these uh, bolts all match the only holes that I had to drill bigger were these ones the top two because these are I think these are five eighths pin or, or maybe slightly smaller now I also still have to figure out some sort of tensioning for the belt and this pulley here is pretty I mean it tensions it it's I might just <laughs> for the meantime I might just stick a clamp on here and just clamp this thing you know taut and then I could also just put a a bolt in here that you just tight tighten and loosen it you know run a weld a saw uh, nut onto here and then you just thread the bolt in and out and then that will tension the belt also. I mean, I could do that or heck, actually, I might even put the clamp right here. Just clamp that just like that just to keep tension on it. So well, let's try putting this thing on and see how this works. In addition to this setup here, what I want to also do is put a second and maybe even a third set of pins on this somehow because I want to move this whole tiller offset to the left and to the right of the tractor. So this tiller is only like 21 inches wide and you can see, you know, you can see the Suburban there and then see how much smaller the tiller is. So I want to be able to till offset, I'll probably put it on the right side because that's where the handle is and that's where all the strength is. So that mean would mean the pins and stuff would have to be over here to shift that thing over there so that's how a lot of the other tillers are put together so let's try hooking this thing up here's what I've come up with to mount this tiller uh, let me do the bottom links first so you just put the bottom on bottom two pins in and you get your lynch pins I think that's what these things are called. There's one. There's two. And then I have to pick this up just a little bit in order to slide the top link on. And just like that, I have hooked this tiller up to the three point on the tractor. And it is a pretty good lift, I'm not gonna lie. It does take a decent amount of pull to lift this thing, but it does lift up off the ground. And for the most part, we are ready to do some tilling with this thing. Uh, actually, I've already <laughs> I've already tilled a little bit with it, and you guys can tell by the amount of dirt that's on the tines themselves. It's kind of wet to be tilling. It's not real bad, but it's kind of wet. So uh, the gearbox is leaking in this thing, and I think I'm gonna just f not fill it with grease, but put a decent amount of grease in that gearbox that's about all I can do these the seals in this are they're not gone but you can't find any of them so you know this tiller isn't being made anymore this tiller in case anyone doesn't know this tiller this old part down here and obviously not the motor but uh, this piece down here 
that was made in the 60s. So we are pushing 40, 50, 60, 60 years old, this tiller is. so, And it maybe has not even 10 hours on it. So I'm going to put some more grease in the gearbox of this thing. And then let's do some tilling. I've gassed this thing up. It should still have plenty of oil in it to start with. I've got the belt tension. And I, like I said, I'm going to have to figure out something for the tensioner in this thing. So, you know, as soon as I start this motor, these tines are going to start spinning. Just so you guys know, that's just how it is for right now. So, turn it to on. Give her a little bit of throttle. Full choke. And stand back because these times, like I said, are going to be spinning. Uh, give it some throttle. And hopefully this thing will fire right up. Now that is at an idle, so the tines are not going to be spinning very fast, but once we get her going, it'll be spinning faster, so I'll show you guys what we're going to be tilling. This is pretty much what I was talking about before. I've already gone over this uh, one time with the rats. I've just kind of tested this tiller out. I apologize, I didn't get to film uh, me welding on that other top piece for the top link. And I also didn't film uh, this tilling. It was getting too dark to film, and the videos would have been pretty darn crummy. So, you guys will just have to see this in the daytime. Uh, I don't know, a day later. Something like that. But you can see this is, it's sort of working. However, uh, the tines do stop every once in a while. That is because, uh, like I said, I turned this into a counter-rotating tiller, so there's being, there's a lot more stress being put on everything. And what I have to do is either put a larger pulley on the motor. The motor only has a 2-inch pulley. I would really like to get the time spinning a lot faster. Uh, that would be pretty nice. They obviously do not spin very fast right now. I think if I doubled the pulley size, that would be awesome. And then I also have to put more tension on the belt because, like I said, I'm putting more pressure against the tines going in forward, and the tines are rotating in reverse. So There's definitely some more things I need to figure out. Uh, I found a better clamp. That is, uh, this is actually a free clamp from Harbor Freight, and surprise, surprise, it actually works quite well uh, once things get worn in in it, and I, the pulley was cutting a groove in the plastic on the clamp, and it was actually holding everything in place, which is kind of funny. But all I'm trying to do here is, like I said, just till this ground up, and then I also have a set of discs for this tractor. As long as a mold, uh, I also have a mold board plow too. But with the discs, what I want to do is I have to flip the discs around and I want to pull the soil together instead of spreading it out. Here's a better view of what I'm trying to accomplish here. Uh, back behind me, uh, further back, is where the backhoe was, and this was where the truck was sitting where we put that utility. A service body on it. But there were ruts all over the place over here. There's even some on the left side of the screen, some further back by that telephone pole, there was some on the other side of that tree by my head. So there were kind of ruts everywhere and I figured before the grass gets too tall I would try and till this but I'll tell you this tiller is working it's working pretty good. I'm kind of really surprised for you know, for a tiller I resurrected out of the barn that only has t uh, probably less than 10 hours on it and the motor's like brand new and the tiller's like brand new 
sort of. Just doesn't look brand new. Uh, this is all working out pretty good. Um, like I said, I'm just really, really surprised at this. I kind of didn't really think this was going to work, but I mean, I was hopeful that it would. So, But I have to, like I said, build a tensioner. And I also bent the top uh, piece that I built. That was three sixteenths or quarter inch thick plate steel. And I actually bent that. I have to straighten it again. And then I need to uh, reinforce it probably with more bed frame. I was really surprised I was able to break that. I found, let's see, I was tilling back behind the barn. I found, I tilled up an old spigot that was dumped out there. I found a brick in the yard and I uh, ripped up a big tree root, about a two inch tree root that was maybe five feet long, something like that. I also stalled this motor which I was really surprised at. I didn't think this would be possible. You know, for anyone that doesn't know, the original horsepower that this tiller was meant for uh, was uh, three and a quarter horsepower, and I doubled, I exactly doubled the horsepower on this thing. So having six and a half horsepower at my fingertips on this tiller is pretty nice. And when you bury it, uh, you can hear with every bite that that tiller takes you can hear the motor surging you know like it's it's working real hard so that was kind of kind of neat to see and all in all I'm pretty impressed with this thing I'll try to if I can I'll try to get some video of me uh, disking this uh, with a set of discs that I have I had to weld on a pin on that I lost well, not myself. Uh, I, I bought it like this. There was not a pin on one of the lower arms of the three-point, so I had to find a bolt. I used a grade 5 bolt, left the head on, uh, ground down the weld, slipped it through the hole, and re-welded it and drilled a hole in it and everything. So I now have another pin on that, so the discs are almost ready to go other than me flipping them around to try and level all this stuff out. See the problem with the tiller it kinda spreads the dirt and I don't really want to spread the dirt all I want to do is I simply till it, loosen it up and then I want to kinda bring it all together because the tiller spreads it out and the discs would spread it out also so I just want to pull it all together. Now granted, I could go over this with a rake. Uh, this is kind of a lot of raking to do uh, by hand. And if I have the machine and stuff and the discs to do this and weather permitting and I have the time, I'll, I'll try to get this all done. And I might seed this. I might not. This grass in here is really... There's probably about a foot to two feet of topsoil right in here, so the ground here is very, very fertile, and it should grow grass just fine, so who knows, maybe I won't have to add any grass seed to this. But you guys can pretty much see right where the dually, uh, de the dually truck marks were in the backhoe and stuff. I'm really surprised I'm actually able to till this in the springtime like I'm doing this. I was figuring I'd have to wait till probably at least June to get this done. And I didn't really want to wait till June to do this just for the simple fact that, you know, the grass is going to be pretty tall by then. And there was no way, there was no way we could possibly mow over all of these ruts. Uh, maybe if you went with them, but I'm just trying to smooth everything out here and you know for any future ruts that we make, which I'm sure there's going to be more, uh, if we want to, we are we have a tiller now that I can till up the ground and make it all smooth again. I also need to add a, an electric 
uh, an electric actuator on the back of this three point it is pretty much everything I can do to lift this lever sitting on the seat and I think an electric actuator would really help things out an awful lot so I think I'm probably going to look for one of those and probably see if I can get my brother to wire in a switch, you know, an up um, momentary on and momentary off switch. But yeah, you can see that I really have to pull this super hard to get that lever up. So. Well, there you go. Hope everyone enjoyed this video. And if you would, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And hopefully we will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.